Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome back to Formula 4 with me, CRG Geo George Morgan, at your service here on this fine Monday evening, of course. Hope you're all looking forward to a nice and certainly exhilarating uh, evening's racing indeed on the F1 2020 game. It's going to be absolutely, uh, well, certainly a, a phenomenal uh, exploit here on track. We are here at the Circuit de Barcelona, Catalonia, in Montemelo, Catalonia, and I am joined by my co-commentator, also from Wales, Yestin Thomas. Yestin, how are you doing? Good evening, everyone. I hope we get more action than last week because uh, I'm in need of watching some uh, league racing, and here we are tonight in, uh, in Spain. Hopefully, the weather is... Uh, is, is going to be quite nice and we'll have some uh, good battles. Yes, yeah, nothing quite like the weather over in Catalonia, of course. Obviously, um, Spa itself, uh, sorry, not Spa, sorry, Spain, should I say. Very warm country, of course. Went there on my holidays last year, uh, which is obviously uh, always nice. But obviously, holidays, distant thing in the past. Now, obviously, undergoing the coronavirus crisis, certainly no holidays can be made. Certainly no trips over abroad on the plains uh, certainly not ideal at this moment in time. Obviously, co uh, comment there from X Gaming. Hi, Mandan Kitch. Hello, X Gaming. I don't know who Mandan Kitch are, but I'm sure they're keeping well. And uh, we're looking forward uh, to seeing what these drivers do out on track. Obviously, it's going to be a real thriller today, Estin. We've got lots to look forward to. Blaze not racing here today. Of course, championship leader, 97 points to his name. Droftas P2 on 95. Droftas with a great chance to go P1 here today. Indeed. Obviously, we've had some... Uh... Driver news for the unfortunately a couple of drivers leaving us, but uh, including uh, Young Stinson who was third in uh, third in the Pot One Championship, fourth in the uh, in the drivers. But there's a great shame to see the uh, Nintendo driver depart. But uh, blazing a brilliant opportunity for Drottas here tonight to overtake uh, Blaze. It certainly is indeed. We're just taking a view here of the garages as we now see uh, the Team Jaguar car going out as well as the JCB car. And uh, currently leading the way in the team championship, seeing as we're talking about teams, is Nintendo. They are here, obviously, with their top driver, Aylan, uh, who's currently spearheading their performances this season. He's doing a tremendous job indeed. And, uh, of course, Young Stinson, their former Pop 1 driver, has, like you said, Yestin, finished with Formula 4. He's moved on. He's been picked up by an eSports team. So big changes in the team Nintendo. And um, you have to wonder whether that will upset their chances in well, certainly for the rest of the season, because don't forget, JCB, albeit they are 60 points behind them, but it's certainly not untouchable. Yeah, obviously, in one worse weekend, and most of that points tally could be, obviously, uh, wiped away in this game on again. So, uh, it should be interesting to see what happens tonight. 
certainly will be indeed as we now see ice streams yt making his way down through towards the next straight obviously this is heading down towards the kea bend and uh, this is almost like a, a very stiff left hander, almost turning back on yourself before you make your way up towards the next chicane leading up to Bank San Bedell. And uh, the man ahead of him there is Bill Energetic Six, who is actually taking a seat in the Formula 4 reserve car here today. Obviously, if you're just joining Formula 4 as a driver, you will be assigned to the reserve seat and uh, can't be assigned to a team as we know. Watch him make his way around the next right-hander. I've had experiences of commentating on Energetic 6 in the past. A very formidable force, certainly a, a very good amount of pace behind this man. He certainly knows how to move a, tra move a car around a track, that's for sure, as he makes his way up through the elf curves. Of course, this is, a, again, a semi-chicane, a bit of a loose chicane. He takes all the curves indeed. That's where you generate the most pace. He now hugs that inside line, and uh, that's heading round Renault curve now, heading round the next bend which is Repsol and uh, very shortly making his way down towards the seat of course the seat is actually a double apex uh, almost like a late apex should I say and uh, you head out onto the runoff area powering through heading down towards the curve now this one again very tricky you've got a small downhill section leading to an uphill and then a long climb as you can now see energetic six eating up a lot of turf as he now rounds cancer corner heading down towards the next bend of course and uh, this is where, of course, they'll face Lakea once again. And uh, around this very stiff left, up through the next S section. Heading around Bank San Bedell once again. And Energetic Six looking to take uh, the ball by the horns here. Oh, a little bit messy there on the exit. And they're uh, heading around Europe Car. That certainly was not tidy. That was a scuff for his time. As Andenge lands a first blow of 115.249. But infamous Pillars trumps him at the start of 115.186. Certainly the 115s certainly seem to be the place to be here in Q1 at the moment. Yeah, obviously just drivers getting, getting an eye out for the track and uh, over, it looks overcast there, conditions-wise here in the Q1. So the 15s is not bad as a, as a bank of lap. So we'll just wait for the rest of the field to finish their laps and see what they can produce. Absolutely. Well, that's uh, Andenj uh, representing Team Jaguar or uh, Pulp Jaguar, as they're officially called. Currently in P2 is Andenj, of course infamous pillars trumping him there just after he set his lap time albeit very minimal time gaps in between them just literally oh, just over half a tenth so very minimal indeed and certainly this is what you can expect to see certainly here at formula four we got very uh, a very strung out uh, classification here obviously in separate pots based on speed and uh, each team has a driver from each pot you have four pots in total uh, each are determined by the pace of the driver. Obviously, that is all done prior to the start of the season. You have to do a three separate time trials where they'll determine their average time and see where they sit in amongst the rest of the pots. As Droftas goes quickest now with a 114.931. That is absolutely superb there by the new Portonian who goes top step here for the JCBF1 team. Great boon of confidence and the only man to enter the 114s, yes, Dean. Yeah, that's a, it's a good left for JCB and the, and, and the new pot man. Puts himself obviously on pole, but there's a long way left in the qualifying. That could change quite quickly. There's still drivers yet to uh, set a lap. There's a few drivers in the middle sector. There's uh, LP and the Jaguar. He's, he's just about to start the final sector. I don't know if it's on a lap or not, which is a bit of a shame. Um, Chewie's just starting his lap, and there's not really much else going on. Well, we're just watching uh, Matteo at this moment in time heading round that... Uh... Lakea Bend, obviously representing Team Nintendo here today. And uh, Team Nintendo made up today of Matteo, Chewy, and of course their, their prize driver, Aylan, who's currently spearheading their uh, promises for championship glory at the moment. It certainly led this team very, very well. As we now see Matteo now round in the final corner, of course, this is the new Holland corner heading up towards the line. What can Matteo lay down here today? P5! A 116.303, obviously not the best that we've seen. A 115 is certainly the average time you'd expect a lot of these drivers to obtain. Currently, MTV looking the strongest. They've got infamous pillars up there in P2. Chazza as well in P4. Not forgetting Xerxes, who he likes to be called Xerxes in P6. I am Sloth down in P11. So only one driver at the top 10 for MTV here in Q1. So a, a great display of confidence from that team. Obviously, they need, a, they need to put a lot of work in here today. Um, certainly with BMW only being down to two drivers, they have a great chance of closing the gap. They're currently on 164 points. B 
the MW on 199. So MTV, this could be a great opportunity for them to move their way up the team championship yesterday. And obviously, as you said, that there's only one outside of the uh, one MTV car outside of the top ten. That that car is uh, lost. He's in the pits. So obviously, he'll be he'll be out there and he'll get a lap in hopefully quite soon. There's still drivers setting lap times. LP in the Jaguar is in the last sector. I think this is a uh, an attempt of a hot lap. He goes in for this very tricky right hander before going into the final chicane. Make sure he doesn't cut the corner. Exits quite well. He kept in fourth gear there, which is a bit interesting. Now through the last corner, see what he can do. He's ran out the VRS and he comes across the line. To the woman is 16.8. That puts in P7 as things stand just behind Matteo. Yeah, respectable lap there from LPE. Puts him near enough mid-table. Obviously still in the top 10 nonetheless. The top 15, of course, qualify in to Q2. And uh, we have plenty of time left remaining, of course, to oh, just under 10 and a half minutes here in Q1. Obviously Spain, a phenomenal circuit indeed. Uh, obviously used mainly for winter testing. Uh, and, of course, I don't think we'll be seeing much winter testing in Formula 1 uh, this season, of course. We've only got a three-month break until the new championship season. We're seeing Xerxes coming past what looks to be LPE now. I'm just interested to look at because Paulie Orange is out on a fast lap too and I'm I'm intrigued to see how he gets on. In fact, he goes P2. A phenomenal lap there by Paulie Orange. And uh, certainly JCB looking very, very strong. Of course, they've got Droftas and Orange in the same team. A very, very good pairing. And uh, I've got to say, really, really strong prospects here for the JCB team indeed. Currently sitting on the front row. Obviously, this is only Q1, folks. So still a lot of qualifying to be done, but certainly a great display of confidence. But no one can see, well, no one seems to be able to touch Droftas's 1 minute 14. That is a sensational time. And uh, currently, well over, or well, just under a tenth. Uh, or actually more than that, it's uh, actually around two tenths quicker than that of his teammate Paulie Orange. Sensational from Droftas. Yeah, I just wanted to say that the, I'm going to make a really bad pun here, yeah, but the, there is a, 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 a Glock in the last sector who's looking looking like he's running a, a very nice Jaguar delivery, delivery there. It's a bit, bit darker than what we normally expect to see, but he's, he's coming around the final corner to set his first lap of the day. What will this be? A one minute... 14.6, that is what we want to see. That is brilliant from the Jaguar, and he's put himself at the top of the tree. Yes, Pulp Jaguar will be grinning after that display from Glock, of course. A new arrival here in Formula 4, and uh, he's really taken on that green livery, and it, it's his own uh, take on the Jaguar livery. I've got to say, it does look stunning nonetheless. Glock on the top spot here in Q1, 114.672 on the soft tyres. And uh, if that's not a boost of confidence for Jaguar, who've had a very difficult season this year, currently lying P5 in the team championship, uh, approximately just under 20 points from MTV Motorsport. They have a huge mountain to climb, but with someone like Glock in your team, it'll certainly give you a huge boost, that's for sure. On board with I am Sloth going from the last sector, and uh, I think he's playing a bit of Dirt Rally 2.0, not Formula 1. That puts him the. P10 with a woman in 16.3. That was brilliant car control to keep, keep the car alive. But I don't think the rear tyres will be happy with him. But uh, yeah, that's a, a brilliant lap from Glock. Uh, and you know, obviously there'll be many jokes about that, referring to that moment in 2008. But uh, a brilliant lap. Absolutely. A phenomenal lap indeed from I Am Sloth. And again, furthers my point from earlier on that... Uh, Obviously, MTV Motorsport are looking for an upturn in their fortunes. Like I said, they've had a, a very tricky season, but uh, certainly with the likes of Infamous Pillars, very capable of race wins. He hasn't had it all go his own way this season. And uh, in his pot, he currently lies P4 in pot one. Of course, on 73 points, 10 points off Young Stinson, who, is, who has unfortunately left uh, Formula 4, but obviously in his new esports team, looking to go on to uh, into further things. As we now take a look down at Xerxes, who's out on a flying lap as well, as he makes his way down towards the Kea. Of course, representing Team MTV Motorsport as well. Rounding that left-hander, heading up towards the next chicane. And uh, what Xerxes is going to pull off here, of course. He's uh, also a recent applicant of Formula 4. And uh, did drive uh, in our last race, which was, of course, Monaco. 
Um, unfortunately, due to the situation we have with the online lobbies at Baku, we weren't able to race there. So this is the second time we've seen Xerxes as he rounds the final corner and uh, comes up across the line. Can he go quicker? And Xerxes, no, no improvement. A 117.372, about three tenths slower uh, than where he was previously, but still P12, so he is still in the qualification zone, albeit we've got six minutes left to go, still plenty of time for a twist in the tail. I think LP will not be happy with that MTV car, as he held him up going through the first chicane. Literally, I think LP let him by when uh, when the MTV car went on his, uh, on his lap, and obviously LP expected the uh, favourite to be returned, and he didn't get that through turn one, so LP will be livid. Yeah, absolutely, he will not be happy with that. I'm sure there'll be some, certainly some question marks over what happened going into turn one there. Uh, of course, sometimes uh, you do encounter blind spots as you enter that first corner. And you can just see LP there, maybe not too worried about setting a lap time at this stage, thinking of conserving the energy in the car. As you can now see an energetic six out on a flyer, looking to improve on that one minute 17 that he set before. And uh, as I said before, dressed in the reserve colours as well for Formula 4 as he now runs wide again and really struggling with the grip and staying on track. And that certainly won't help his time as uh, we now see that uh, Xerxes is still out on a slow lap as well. LPE, who's about to come across the line, no doubt looking to nail down another fast lap. Drofdas is out on track as well. Whether he's going to have a go at trying to beat Glock's time, I'm not sure. Certainly will be uh, a big boom to the... Uh, certainly in terms of a mind games perspective obviously Glock and Drofdas have had their fair share of battles in the past, obviously two very very quick drivers indeed and Drofdas and Glock um, have certainly given a lot of entertainment to many viewers here of the F1 2020 game as we now see the GCB come up through the next chicane indeed, Drofdas now rounding Bank Sambadel and uh, very shortly heading over to the Europe car Ben, this next right hander before he bombs down towards the final chicane of course, this being the Europe, uh, heading down towards the, well, just after Europe car, this is heading down towards the Chicane ACC. As we now see, that JCB cross the line does not go quicker. In fact, he is a minuscule amount of improving his time as we lose Chazza there. Now, I'm not sure if that's a retirement in the pit lane there, Yestin, but very, very early to call it a day. I mean, I appreciate well, he's probably safe. Has there been an incident? I don't think there has. No, I don't think so. There was yellow flags of the um, of the back straights, and obviously, does indicate that the that the cars retired in the pit. Um, Doftas did improve on his lap. Actually, he was, I think, he set a 14.9 previously. That was a 14.7. So, uh, the gap is underneath a tenth between the top two. Well, it's getting very, very close indeed. Here we have Aylin, of course. Uh, team captain, I would say, of the Nintendo squadron. And indeed, they're doing well at this moment in time, top of the team top championship. Of course, their uh, prospects were dashed slightly with Young Stinson leaving the team. As we now see, Aylan making his way through the Elf curves now on the outset. Want to try and at least coax your car as close to the curb on the way round the Renault curve. Heading under the Pirelli banner now before he hits Repsol. And uh, again, brushes with the curves yet again. Uh, don't want to be trapping yourself too much on the uh, grass or the gravel traps. It can land you in serious trouble as he rounds the seat heading down towards Verth Curve. Of course, now this one, again, very tricky. You've got to plan your braking zone correctly. Eats up some of the curb on the inset and on the outset powers through. This looks strong from Aylin as he now rounds Campsa Corner. And uh, the DRS section now activates as he heads down towards Lakea Bend now. Nintendo looking to once again try and dominate the top end here. Certainly Aylin very capable and uh, a pot one driver on any other day. Currently pot two in this season's championship as he heads down towards the Europe car bend once again heading down through the chicane ARCC and uh, as he does so he's got one corner left. That's the new Holland as he comes around it now. What's Aylin going to post here as he comes up past the RS line? It is going to be P6. He improves slightly a 115.407. Very respectable indeed. Only uh, just under three tenths away from infamous pillars uh, caught in the middle is Andenge of course in P5 but a great lap from Aylin and uh, certainly again we can talk about confidence that will certainly throw confidence in the Nintendo camp Yestin yeah that'll secure his spot for the next confidence session whatever happens and uh, obviously that'll be a good confidence, uh, confidence booster for the uh, Nintendo team with a couple of drivers opting to retire Chewie's rejoined the session 
which is uh, good to see. He's down in P15, which won't uh, won't be a good sight for the Nintendo cars. Um, Paul is about to finish a lap. I don't know. Oh, it's about to have a P11 for the 116.6. That is a, a tidy effort from the uh, uh, the Jaguar car. And he'll put himself P11. Yeah, superb quality lap there from Paul Watson. It was certainly uh, improved no end since he joined Formula 4. He has really shown uh, a true never-say-die attitude in this league, and it certainly has boded him well in this Catalonia race, of course, the Circuit of Barcelona Catalonia for the Spanish Grand Prix. P11 for that Pulp Jaguar car, and uh, I'm sure they'll be delighted. Currently, all their cars that are racing here today are in to Q2, as things stand. Glock, of course, on P1. Not forgetting you've got Andenj in P5, Paul Watson P11, actually qualifying higher than LPE, who is actually pot three. And uh, all four of the Jaguar cars will figure in Q2, which is going to be absolutely phenomenal. Obviously, cracking effort there from Paul Watson. As uh, we now see Xerxes, he's heading around Capsa Corner. What's he going to post? Of course, we've got Energetic 6 about to come round the final chicane, the chicane RACC. And as he does so, this is you've got to think this is actually going to be Energetic 6's final chance to get ahead in qualifying as he comes up across the line. Let better late than never. P11 there for Energetic 6 and the reserve car indeed with a 116.308. Great effort there indeed as we now see Xerxes heading around New Holland as well. Just brushing the curve slightly on the outset now, powering through. Xerxes here with a punch. Does not, I think he, does he improve? I don't think he did. In fact, he did. P9 goes to Xerxes. Unbelievable there for MTV Motorsport. We just missed it there towards the end. It just all cuts out. But what action in qualifying. Glock is your P1 sitter in Q1. Droftas into P2. Paulie Orange P3. Infamous Pillars in P4. And Denge P5. Aylin P6 for Team Nintendo. Chazza P7 for MTV. Sloth P8. Xerxes P9 after an absolutely astounding performance. All shot down P10. Matteo P11. Paul Watson into Q2. He's got to be delighted with that for Pulp Jaguar. And uh, qualifies above his teammate LPE. Ice Streams YT through as well. And unfortunately we lose Energetic 6, Chewy and Ramsel. Down to 14 cars. But what a hench grid we have going into Q2 here, Yestin. Yeah, it's very close in the midfield. There's a just under three tenths separate in eight and I believe eleventh I think it was I couldn't quite remember from the uh, classifications from Q1 but uh, very close indeed yeah I mean how much would that mean to Jaguar uh, claiming all four cars into Q2 that is absolutely scintillating uh, I mean especially Paul Watson he's certainly shown um, to, to be one of the one of the top end drivers there into Q2 I mean he is is his performance, I wouldn't say, obviously top end, but biggest improver, that's for sure. Uh, qualifying above LPE, absolutely unbelievable. Uh, you got to give uh, him, you got to give him every bit of credit. Yeah, brilliant from Paul. Uh, he was at the start of the season, he wasn't really getting much uh, anywhere. I think his first Q2 appearance was was either Monaco or Vietnam, and uh, ever since then, he's he's grown quite massively into this, and uh, it's a really good opportunity for for him today. Yeah, well, we're now seeing the cars go out for Q2 here now. Ice Streams leading them out. And uh, the JCB team, once again, looking to uh, obviously try and dominate the field. Of course, they've got a lot of work to do. And obviously, you've got to think that this is their chance to sort of go ahead of Nintendo, who are now down to, obviously, their uh, the two drivers here in Q2, Matteo and Aylin. That's all that represents Team Nintendo. And uh, looking further down, of course, we've got uh, MTV. We're fielding all four cars as well, I believe, looking at it on track. So they're fielding all four cars. So it's four cars for MTV, four cars for Jaguar. So the battle for fourth place is going to be a real hot one yesterday. And it would be very interesting to see who qualifies where, especially between those two teams. And uh, it should be an intriguing Q2 session. 15 minutes after the 18 minutes qualifying one session. And obviously the top ten goes through, but I don't know what will happen today with the uh, with the reduced numbers. Will it just be the top nine, or will we just stick to the top ten as usual? But uh, yeah, drivers starting their first runs with the ice streams and the JCB leading the way. Absolutely, and he's going to be the first to net in a time. Subject to obviously no cutting the curbs, but I'm sure we'll soon see. Of course, Spain can really test your knowledge of track limits as we're now seeing iStreams now make his way around what seems to be the Renault curve 
very soon to be going under the Pirelli banner in the yellow livery. That is the JCB F1 team. Now heading around Repsol and sticking to that curve like glue. Obviously, you've got to hit every single apex to get a, a real smart time. Doesn't run too wide heading down towards the seat, which is obviously a good place to be. You don't want to hit any of the elements, certainly off circuit. He just brushes it there slightly, though, as he heads around Verth. And uh, on the outset now, heading up towards Campser Corner. And again, just brushing the curve on the inset. Doesn't even brush the curve on the outset, which is absolutely unbelievable. Down towards the Kea. He's finding a lot of traction here, his ice stream. Certainly keeping that car on the grey stuff, that's for sure. Heads up through the next semi-chicane, through Bank Sambadel. And uh, we've got a yellow flag in Sector 3. I think that's LPE just slowing down, letting ice streams through there. So well done from LPE on that as they head down through the RACC chicane down now through towards New Holland. Here comes Ice Streams. The first time of the day for the JCB team as he does so. And that is going to be a 117.174. But Chazza instantly responds with a 116.148 with Andenge now for Jaguar with a 115.342. So phenomenal laps there nestled in already. We're back in the 115s again. I am Sloth is out on a fast lap as well for MTV. Paul Watson following it closely in behind as well. As you know, see the MTV sports car now making its way down towards what will be the birth curve. I mean, how do you rate Jaguar's chances in this one, Yestin? Obviously, they're currently P5 in the in the uh, team championship. A bit shaky there was uh, I am Sloth, but uh, the, the team Jaguar have, have certainly got a lot of work to do. And uh, certainly, they seem to be in the best position possible. Four cars in Q2 certainly gives them a lot of promise. Yeah, a brilliant opportunity for Jaguar, like we've said. But um, I just wanted to say that all three, all the top three drivers who've set a lap, Sloth will be another when he comes across the line. They've all on the medium tyres, which is obviously very interesting around this track. As Sloth sets a 116.4, then there's Paul with a 17.1 on the softs. So obviously you can see that uh, three of uh, four out of the five both on the medium tyres, which is uh, going to be interesting. Yes, Paul Watson going quicker than Ice Streams, of course, and those two are very hotly contested in the Paul Four in the Pop Four Championship. Paul Watson currently on 30 points, and Ice Streams on 13. So, obviously, those two are loggerheads going further down that championship table. Paul Watson actually only seven points off top spot. Chewy is currently only in that position right now, and uh, he is not in this qualifying session. So that is certainly going to aid Paul Watson's chances of uh, getting some serious points. Of course, Ramsell is in this lobby, though, I believe. Uh, representing the BMW team, who are down to their only two drivers, as we've discussed. As uh, I am Sloth now makes his way around the next left-hander. Just a big uh, shout-out to Michael Sprout, uh, who is there in the live chat. Hope you're keeping well, sir. As uh, we now see I am Sloth now making his way around the next right-hander. Now, whether this will be an improvement, I'm not so sure. Could be a question that he's actually waiting to store up the energy as Paulie Orange goes quickest with a 115.172. A great lap there indeed for the JCB man. And Paulie Orange would be delighted with that. Obviously another very good time. Uh, we did see his teammate Droftas get into the 114s. And it was like a 114.90. I think it was like a 9.7 something I think in the end. But uh, we're now witnessing All Shot Down make his way through. Uh, one of the mere only representatives of BMW, and certainly the only BMW in this session yesterday. Just how handicapped a BMW going to be in today's Spanish Grand Prix? Um, massively is the word uh, about how struggling they're going to be with the uh, driver situation. Also, though, and we'll have to uh, definitely get into Q3 if they stand a good bunch of results today and hope for some unfortunate circumstances for other drivers as uh, All Shot Down comes out to the final corner, opens the DRS, comes across the line, just at the 15-9, puts in P3 for now, but there's still a few more drivers waiting to set a lap. Well, it's a superb time for All Shot Down. Uh, 115.956 puts him up, uh, certainly in the mix with the Pot 2 players. And uh, All Shot Down is currently in P2 in his Pot Championship, the Pot 3 Championship, six points behind Matteo. Uh, who is currently in P9, yet to field a lap time. Uh, he's in the pits, I think, waiting for the track to certainly warm up. So don't be fooled yet, folks. Still a lot of drivers yet to come out. We're still yet to see from Glock, of course, Pillars, Droftas, and Aylan as well. So that's plenty of drivers from the top end who have yet to field times. 
Aylan at the moment now beginning his fast lap. Now let's give you another tour of this Spanish circuit as we now see Aylan now making his way around the Renault curve once again as he now rounds the apex and uh, sticking to it like Lou on the outset now heading under the Pirelli banner breaking into Repsol and just trying to hug again the curve and it does throw you out if you're applying the pressure and certainly applying the power as he now heads around the seat bend. As I said, a, delay, a delayed apex on that corner as he heads on the outset towards Berth. And uh, as he does so, you want to eat up a lot of the curve on the inset. On the outset, take a lot too. Heading up towards Capsa Corner now. Rounding that right hand that does not brush the curve at all. Going around that bend, which is absolutely extraordinary. He's finding all sorts of grip on those mediums now. Heading down towards Lakea Bend. Just easing the car gently around that corner. And uh, the Nintendo car looking very, very exuberant here at Spain. Rounding the Bank San Bernal down the stretch leading towards Europe car now and uh, again hits the curbs very nicely indeed down towards the chicane RACC and uh, looking very smart indeed applying the clutch and the brake where necessary as he rounds the final corner at New Holland and comes across the line is P3 for Aylan there at 115.817 puts him right up there for dancing and uh, only uh, should I say only five tenths of a second off and Denge very impressive they yes yeah Quick lap, that'll do. Obviously, we're still waiting for more drivers. Glock is one of them who's coming through the middle sector now. It looks quite slow uh, looking at the sector time, so I don't know if he's had a mistake. It doesn't doesn't say that his lap time's invalid. There must be a mistake in there somewhere. He is driving quite slowly, so he might be going on a second lap. Pillars is also on a lap, going through the same sector. As uh, he just gets out of that tricky right hand to go into the last again now. Make sure he keeps it clean, don't cut the corner, have a nice exit, which kind of links up to the final corner, really. And he opens his DRS to come across the line to 115.5 and puts in P3, right in the middle of Andange and Aylan. Yeah, phenomenal lap there from Pillars. MTV Motorsport with all three, well, three of the cars in the top ten. Xerxes is out on a fast lap as well. Can he put his pink livery up there with the rest of them as he makes his way down towards the next left-hander? And uh, as they do so, Drofdas out on a fast lap too, as uh, he makes his way around Verth Curve. Uh, but Xerxes will be the first to cross the line between the two of them, as we can now see him just edging his way around Bank San Bedell. And uh, I don't think this is going to be a fast lap. It's actually a 117s he's at before he hits the chicane RACC. So Xerxes not on a fast lap there, as we now see Drofdas heading up through that next chicane he's trying to at least apply the pressure on these medium tires heading round the next right hander at Europe car now brushes the curves on the outset now this is Olivery powering through the chicane RACC the P2 it, P2 in the drivers championship drop das looking to once again perch himself on top spot comes across the DRS line and it's gonna be P2 does not beat Orange's time uh, approximately a tenth of a second separating the two of them but uh, all they'll worry about is the fact that JCB are currently occupying the top two places here in Q2 and uh, just look at that sight for sore eyes the two Jaguar cars leaving the bay and that's Paul Watson and Glock Yastin. Yeah, so they both uh, split on the tyres again Paul is out on the softs looking to uh, get another quick lap in and make sure, and make sure he can stay in the top 10 obviously Glock is out on the mediums looking to start on the better race tyre as his pace should should be able to get him into Q3 but obviously a lot of things happen can a lot of things can happen in the ring in four and a bit minutes absolutely and it's uh, going to be interesting to see who takes the advantage going into the end of q2 as uh, we now see glock warming up the tires in behind you have to wonder whether he's going to plan to use paul watson as a potential improvement for pace maybe use his slipstream it is a possible well certainly a yeah. possibility well, he has fallen back a bit, so obviously he's wary of the uh, dirty air effect that you'd obviously get uh, around this track. Obviously, Matteo, he hasn't set a lap time yet on his call concession in the Nintendo. He's also out on a set of mediums, the yellow uh, the yellow stripe tyre. Yeah, we're just seeing now that Xerxes has, uh, in fact, he's going slow again in Sector 1. And uh, Xerxes is struggling to put something together here. He's in P10 for now. But uh, he's in real jeopardy as things stand. Ice streams out on an outlap too. Uh, as we now see Paul Watson now heading around Elf Curves. Uh, now around the Renault Curve now. Uh, again, we're seeing yellow flags in Sector 2 and 3. I'd imagine, again, that is Xerxes. Just looking to slow the car down. He knows that he's only really got one shot at this now because we're down to the final 
three minutes of qualifying. There's no need to come into the pit lane, or should I say, there's no chance of him coming into the pit lane at this stage. As uh, Paul Watson very nearly losing the car there on the exit of the seat. Now heading into Verth and uh, crunching through the curves, heading up towards the Capsa corner. Of course, in behind, he's going to have Glock looking to improve behind him. Slightly slow there from Paul out of that Capsa corner. You see Glock there in the distance with his DRS open, powering down towards the Lakea bend as they now make their way through up the next chicane. The two Jaguar cars, indeed, Paul Watson goes wide and lets Glock through. Very sensible decision by the Team Jaguar as they make their way around the next chicane now. Here comes Glock around the chicane RACC. Now this man knows how to set the world on fire as he comes around the final corner at New Holland across the DRS line. Can Glock go quickest? Beware! And a 114 once again. 114, 947 or 974, should I say, on the mediums. Sensational lap yesterday. Phenomenal. That was one of the best laps I've seen in a long time. On a set of medium tyres as well, just to say that. That is brilliant from Glock. See if he can uh, repay the favour and give Paul the slip uh, give uh, Paul a nice simple uh, uh, way so he can just uh, go past him. Yeah, well, Paul Watson now, he's only got one chance at this. He's on two lap old softs. Now, the, the crushing thing for Paul, if he does finish in the top 10, he's going to have to use those softs. And bear in mind, three laps on those tyres, two or three laps on those tyres, do, will affect his race without a shadow of a doubt because a lot of these guys will be starting on reasonably fresh mediums, uh, which will certainly upset his chances of top 10 points here today. But uh, obviously, I think Paul, Paul's uh, well, certainly Paul's ambitions uh, are treading certainly of that, of getting into Q3 if he can. And uh, it won't matter to him if he does finish outside. At least he's tried. And uh, he can start potentially in P11 on a tyre compound of his choice. He now comes through Chicane RACC. I don't think this is being improved. And like you quite rightly have seen, folks, he has left into the pit lane. So that'll be the end of Paul Watson's qualifying session, that's for sure. As we now see, Matteo heading around the next right hander. Of course, we've got I Am Sloth there in P10. So plenty of spots up for grabs here, folks. Uh, P's 9 and above are all in the pits and docking for the time being. Uh, infamous Pillars and Paulie Orange have retired, so has Glock. He can't see any improvements on the lap time that he's made up, that's for sure. As I Am Sloth now makes his way down towards the Verth Curve. MTV, Mo uh, MTV Mot Motorsport looking for an improvement in their prospects once again. They've got I Am Sloth and Xerxes out on laps right now. Out lap for Xerxes, fast lap for Sloth. As uh, you can now see Sloth making his way down towards Lakea Bend. This 90 degree left hander. That uh, if you get it wrong, it can punish you. He heads through the next chicane around Bank San Bedell. And uh, I am Sloth now making his way towards Europe Car Bend now. Just hugging that apex there on the inset down towards the chicane RACC. This is very, very important for I am Sloth. Needs to try and improve his time, but no, not happy with the lap. He's going to come in and retire as uh, Xerxes now is about to come across the line himself. I believe that is qualifying or Q2 complete there, Yestin. And the uh, Glock definitely quickest without a shadow of a doubt. And uh, But what about this? Paulie Orange and Dropdass, the two JCB boys, P's two and three. Have JCB come here with serious points in mind, Justin? Obviously, everyone wants to come here and uh, pick up a good haul of points. I uh, just wanted to say for that moment with Sloth, Matteo did lose the back end of the exit of the, uh, of the chicane while going into the final corner. That, that cost him an opportunity to improve. So... Doth must have saw that and uh, went into the pits. Absolutely. So, obviously, just could not work out for them or just did not work out for them, shall I say. And uh, there, as Xerxes rides around towards the the, the birth curve. Uh, but that's your that's certainly Q2 sorted and settled, folks. Glock is going to be in P1 for that one. Uh, Paulie Orange in P2. Dropped ass in P3. And Denge in P4 for Pulp Jaguar. Infamous Pillars, the MTV Motorsport Driver in P5. Aylan for Team Nintendo, P6. Chazza in P7 for MTV. All shot down. BMW into Q3. And that's certainly a great bit of news for BMW. We've only got two drivers in today's race. LPE in P9. I'm Sloth P10. That rounds off your top 10. Only one driver on the softs for that one. Matteo Xerxes, Paul Watson, and Ice Streams all eliminated. And uh, interesting to see that all shot will be signed from P... Well, certainly wherever he finishes in Q3, but on soft tyres. The only driver yesterday to be on the softs.
So everyone's thought, oh, they'll put the race in mind for this one and start on the mediums. But uh, unless your name's all shot down in the uh, BMW car, has gone to the softs. And uh, Q3 is underway. 12 minutes. This is going to be the really, really quick stuff. The fastest laps, hopefully. And uh, who do you think is going to get pulled? Well, it's a big mystery to me. we got plenty of huge prospects here going into Q3. Of course, we've just decided what tyres uh, the top 10 will be starting on, obviously, in Q2. Now, this will decide what formation they land in on the grid. Now, my favourite, or my money, should be on Glock. Of course, he comes in here into Formula 4 with a lot of pace and has certainly galvanised the Pulp Jaguar team. Great to see them all out in full force here today. And incidentally, Jaguar with three cars here in Q3. And who's there to join them? MTV Motorsport. Three cars for MTV here in Q3. With Iron Sloth, Chazza and Infamous Pillars representing those in purple. And i got to say, you would not write them off for a very good result at the end of the Spanish Grand Prix. And obviously you've got the two uh, JCBs in uh, Pauli Orange and uh, Joftas, the new, the new pop man. And uh, my prediction, I'm going to go for Paulie Orange for pole. Well, Paulie Orange for pole says yes, Tim. But what do you guys say at home, of course? Please leave your comments in the chat, folks. Of course, we all want to hear from you. We want to know who you predict will be taking top spot going into the start of the Spanish Grand Prix. That, of course, will be happening after Q3, of course, where we're going to be seeing the certainly the best of them here in Formula 4. Uh, drivers from... Uh, both pot ones, two, and of course a little bit from pot three as well. Plenty of quality drivers across this grid formation. With uh, Blaze's absence, of course, Droftas in a very, very good position to take P1 in the drivers' championship, and uh, that must be playing on his mind right now. Yeah. So the uh, opening uh, Q1 laps, uh, Q1 laps. That's it. Go. Q3 laps are underway. Chazza will be the first one to cross the line unless uh, unless um, unless he corner cuts somewhere and he's going through the middle sector now. A very promising opening sector for the MTV car. As he makes sure he doesn't run too wide and exit there. Going into the chicane is always tricky this. You can cut too much of the second part and it'll ruin your lap. Go uphill into this uh, right hand that's quite flat. Just as a little lift as he opens the DRS, flies down into this hairpin style corner of turn 10. Make sure he doesn't lose any traction on exit before going over that kerb. Don't run too much of that. Before going through the long right hander, very snaily. Before going through the really tricky right hander, there's a very nasty kerb there you don't want to get on. Going into the final chicane now, make sure he doesn't cut, which he doesn't. Floor on the gas as he. As he exits the final corner, this will be a 1 minute 15.1. And that is superb. That is absolutely phenomenal from Chazza. And Infamous Pillars goes into the 114. So the 114.8. Of course, Track Evolution playing a vital role here as Glock takes top spot with Drofdas in P2. They're all forming up here now, folks. The top end in the clinical positions. A 114.739 for Glock. And a 114.782 for Droftas, absolutely incredible. And uh, certainly a huge boon for Jaguar, that's for sure. Not to mention JCB is poorly orange. Nets one last minute there. Obviously, him and Glock have had their battles in the past. But a flies eyelash, half a tenth of a second. Poorly orange nets in a 114.670 for JCB. And that puts a P's one and three, at least for now, yes, Din. There's absolutely nothing between the top six. There's just over two tenths between Paulie Orange on provisional pole and Aylan, who's just sat at 14, 14 8, 8, 7, 5 to put himself P6. There's nothing between them. This is brilliant. Absolutely. That's what the viewers want to see. As we now see, I am Sloth out on his hot lap as well. What can this man do, of course? He's a very, very relentless driver. Pot three, of course. And uh, challenging, all, all shot down for that P2 spot, don't forget, as well. Of course, uh, all shot down in this session. has already nestled in a 116.048. So you get a feeling that I am Sloth, his battle is going to be with the likes of all shot down. Don't uh, mistake yourselves, folks. It's very likely we'll see those two battling here again today. Uh, MTV obviously looking to recover after that uh, very tough race they had at Monaco. They were all four of them tightly grouped together going into the middle part of that race, but... Obviously, with the battle that was going on in the middle of the park, 
It uh, certainly did not lend themselves well to getting a positive result, and certainly they were all trapped there and weren't able to galvanise any bigger points positions in the top 10. As we're now seeing, I'm Sloth now rounding the next chicane, the chicane RACC on the outset now. Here comes the purple MTV car now rounding the New Holland corner, heading across the DRS line, past the paddock. Here comes I am Sloth, and uh, no improvement just yet. And uh, I think this is going to be his fast lap now, Yestin. I think that last lap was, it was an invalidation. It was a 16-8, so that wouldn't have uh, made much impact on the positions. So this has got to be his, uh, his quick lap now on the second lap of these tyres. Make sure he's got to get this one done. It's not a very good first sector. 21-2, he set a 21.1 21 in his last lap. So it doesn't really look good for Sloth in the MTV car. But, uh, yeah. Other than that, it's going to be an intriguing final six minutes certainly will be and they'll go quicker than you will think i've got to say they do fly by the minutes here in qualifying as i am sloth now makes his way down towards the left hander now the lakea ben and uh, hugs a lot of that apex now the purple car now making its way through the next chicane round bank sambadel and uh, mtv looking to once again strike the top end can i am soft be the man to take them there as he rounds the next right, down through the next left, of course. It's been the Chicane RACC. Down towards what will be the New Holland corner. And uh, past the paddock, the stands lit up here for the MTV team. As he comes across the line and still an invalidation once again. And uh, he can't afford to keep doing that because, yes, did, that will land him in hot water going into the race. And obviously he will ruin the set of tyres. This will be... Hopefully he'll be in that for him, and for, uh, hopefully I do hope that this is in that for him because he needs a new set of tyres on that car. Meanwhile, Chaz has just started a lap in the uh, system TV car. This is his second run after setting a, uh, a 1 minute 15.198. You put in P7, he's a little bit behind the top six, but there's not that much in it. He's down, unfortunately, but just over half a tenth in the opening sector. He goes down this. Uh, tricky left-hander make sure you get a nice exit before going down to the chicane yeah it's very very close indeed Glock is also out on a lap as well and uh, looking to try and trump that of Paulie Orange try and he's currently sandwiched in between the two JCB cars right now in fact he's slowed down as Glock so whether he's looking to do a fast lap on his next run I'm not sure wasn't happy with the way he took that uh, left-hander as we now see Chazza making his way up through the winding section he as well I'd imagine will probably want to nestle in another quick lap as he makes his way around Europe car heading down through what will be the chicane RACC this looks reasonably racy here from Chazza as uh, he makes his way around New Holland is he going to manage to damage the top end here as Chazza crosses the line and uh, still P7 a 115.063 a good lap nonetheless uh, but currently as things stand two tenths away from Nintendo Zalen yeah, it was a good, a good lap actually, but it was obviously just a little bit far behind from the Elam and, and the rest of the uh, the top guys, but, uh, but not that bad from Chazza. No, not bad at all. All shot down, representing Team BMW, making his way down towards the Kea as well. And uh, BMW, of course, one driver remains in qualifying. They've got two drivers here today. Of course, that being Ramsell and all shot down. Ramsell representing Pop 4. All shot down, representing pot three. Making it through after a, a very, very impressive Q2 performance. As he now makes his way around now, looking to commence his flying lap. And uh, BMW currently P3 in the championship. Of course, they haven't had a lot of luck with um, with drivers this season. Uh, they've had a couple of uh, losses in terms of their roster as uh, he makes his way down towards the Elf Curves. We've got currently all in the top six in the pits at the moment. And it gets you thinking that we're going to be seeing a mad rush for the final minute yesterday. And uh, that's usually when things get tricky. Uh, naturally, the track begins to warm up. You know, the drivers want to take advantage of the uh, the track generation. So you won't be surprising if we start to see some real rapid lap times as we head to the end of quali. So I'm expecting to see some absolute flyers in the last two and a half minutes of this qualifying session. All short, uh, first car out is the Jaguar of LP. He's down in P8. Around about eight tenths off Alan, so you obviously got a lot of improvement to get in that car, but still nothing from the 
the leading pack yet. No, obviously they will make themselves known very shortly. LPE out on an outlap as well as All Shot Down makes his way around Europe car now through the chicane RACC. And the BMW car looking to once again go quicker. This looks impressive from All Shot Down as he rounds the final corner at New Holland. Comes up across the line and that's P8 there for All Shot Down. A place gained on LPE a 115.455. Just over two and a half tenths there from LPE. So... Great bit of work there from All Shot Down. BMW will be pleased. A little bit of progress. And uh, certainly a lap he can be proud of. Now then, everyone's come out at once. It's like waiting for some London buses. Not like I've had experience of it, but apparently that's that's how it goes. We wait for a long time and then they all come at once. Yeah, they certainly do. Outlaps galore across the circuit right now. Uh, of course, the interest is going to be at the top end. Can Paulie Orange hold on to that P1 lead? Obviously, at this moment in time, the gap between him and Glock is very, very fine indeed. Half a tenth currently separating those two. Droft Ass with a 114.782. It is a two tenth gap between all top three cars. Or well, certainly the top six cars all separated by approximately two to, yeah, about two to three tenths. So very impressive indeed as Paulie Orange now makes his way around the right hander at Campset. Heading down towards the Lakea Bend. And the JCB cars once again looking to remain on top spot. Q3 is certainly going to be hotting up here, folks. 30 seconds remaining here towards the end of qualifying. Squeaky bum time is upon us, folks. Any predictions here from you, Yestin? And he predicted that the Pauli Orange would get fallen. I'm going to stand by that. Pillars will be the first one to cross the line, unless his, his lap time gets invalid. I think the driver in front of him in the middle sector is LP, but unfortunately, I think he went for a little bit of a spin on that lap, which is a bit of a shame. But let's see what Pillars can do as he goes up the, uh, the right-hander and opens the DRS going into the last sector. Yeah, he does indeed. And uh, just seeing now on the headset, I am Sloth, who's currently in P10, uh, being gunned down upon by Paulie Orange, who, is, who, of course, has only got one more lap at P1 Glory here. Does not want to be held up by the MTV car. And you can see him weaving all over the place, trying to see or trying to find a way around this MTV purple livery car. This is not going to play into Orange's hands. And indeed, I'm, I hope this is not going to be him slowing up because he's letting the car go. And uh, he's landed himself in a little bit of treachery as uh, Infamous Pillars goes quickest with a 114.447. And uh, certainly that'll be a huge boon to their spirits as well as Glock comes through as well. Droftas currently P4. That is where he will remain, at least for now. As we now see Glock now, last gasp here by the Jaguar team. As we now see Glock coming through the final chicane at the chicane RACC. Coming towards New Holland now. Is Glock going to go quicker? Lights above here at Jaguar as he comes across the line. P2, a 114.536. Not enough to scratch the surface on infamous pillars who will remain in top spot. An amazing sight here at the top end. As we're now seeing them all cross the line. Checking flags across the board. Aylan creeps into P3 with a 114.601. Amazing from the Pot 2 man and Team Nintendo. But Infamous Pillars is your P1 sitter. MTV strike the front, beating Glock by a shade of a tenth of a second. An absolute disaster for JCB there. Draft us down in P5 from Paulie Orange. We obviously got, a, well, you could say impeded by Sloth, but he couldn't get a lap in and he's down in P4. Yes, very minimal gaps in between all of these guys. It just goes to show and testament to the quality that we have here at Formula 4. It's absolutely unbelievable. Here are your quality numbers. P1 goes to Infamous Pillars, the sensational lap of 114.447 for MTV Motorsport. Glock in P2 for Team Pulp Jaguar. P3 goes to Aylan for the Team Nintendo. Paulie Orange, P4 uh, for JCB. Joining him is his teammate in P5, Droftas. And Denge in P6 for Jaguar. Chazza in P7 for MTV. Uh, all shot down in P8 for BMW. The only man in Q3 from the BMW team. LPE for Team Jaguar in P9. And I am Sloth rounding off the grid order here in Q3. Not taking place or making a time in this Q3 session. P10 for the MTV team. But what a phenomenal session there, Yestin. We were treated to once again more uh, fanatics and more hysteria here in this qualifying session. And once again, we see some real quick times. Infamous Pillars 
The unlikely P1 sitter, obviously, given the fact we got Glock there, you tip poorly orange, wasn't the laps we were coming to expect from some of these guys. Yeah, obviously, maybe the track didn't rubber in as much as some of the drivers wanted, and they couldn't get uh, couldn't get the laps in. Obviously, for others, they couldn't uh, have the clear track to, to set their lap times in. So it's going to be a really good opportunity for Pillars if he wants to take a race win year. Absolutely. It's going to be a huge, huge effort from all of these guys to secure their best points possible. Because points on offer all across the grid here uh, at Formula 4. And certainly for pole position as well, you can earn yourself some points too. So infamous Pillars and the MTV team, they've earned themselves certainly a very creditable two points there for the pole position. They'll get a point for the fastest lap as well if they uh, get that done during the race. Uh, of course, that's all for the realms of speculation at this stage. Obviously, we'll have to see the race to find out who will take the top spot position at the Circuit of Catalonia. Uh, I, of course, was very lucky to call the 24-hour of Barcelona Catalonia here at this very circuit. So it's going to be absolutely intriguing as they get underway for the formation lap now, folks. The cars making their way around the circuit. Obviously, it's going to be interesting. Obviously, we spoke about predictions. Are you still sticking with yours, Yestin? I'm I'm not going to predict anymore. I'm gonna I'm gonna stop predicting things because uh, as we saw in that uh, qualifying session, that it, my predictions don't very get much luck in terms of uh, track position. So I'm not going to predict anything as of yet. If there is a late safety car, I might uh, call a name out and think uh, that he will win the Grand Prix. Well, I'm still calling my prediction certainly Clark, albeit that was for the pole position stance, but. Glock, a proven race winner, and uh, comes here to Formula 4 with certainly bags of potential. But I'm sure he will certainly test the runners here at this grid formation, this classification that we have here. Very mighty classification indeed, led by infamous Pillars, who is now running around the Capsa corner. And uh, you can see there the collective of cars warming up their tyres, getting ready for the start of the race. Optimal temperature has never been more important. It always is at the start of a Grand Prix. And certainly you'll need the brakes to be at their warmest as well and their most effective so that you can ensure that uh, when you brake you do not suffer the certainly the, the suffering of, of locking up that's for sure as that can potentially ruin your race or somebody else's for that matter as the MTB car makes its way around the Europe car bend now making its way through the final chicane final thoughts from you Yestin as to the well what we can expect from this Grand Prix hopefully a lot of fun um, just wanted to say about the tyre strategies to start this Grand Prix. Everyone except for All Shot Down is on the medium. So All Shot Down is on the softs as he competed in Q2 and got into Q3. But the rest of the field have gone on the mediums. Yes, interesting topic indeed. What does that mean for the strategies? Was All Shot Down the only driver on the softs? Expect him to make up some places as they now wind their way up towards the grid, of course. All cars now into their grid slots. The lights are about to go red here, folks. First light, second light, third light, fourth light, the fifth light! And it's pedal to the metal. Go, 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 go. Infamous Pillars gets away well in behind Glock. Rides his slipstream there. Infamous Pillars tries to break it going into the elf curve. Going defensive. In behind Aylin has a gap there, but he's being uh, hedged up and popped by Pauly Orange. These two going in tandem now. The front two. Glock looking to steal it from the off. With Infamous Pillars down the inside of what is the Renault curve. On the outside, heading round towards the Pirelli banner. And Glock steals the show. But here comes Pillars. Not done yet. He does not want to sacrifice anything at the start, but the Jaguar man takes the advantage in behind Aylin as well, battling round the next left-hander. They're going wheel to wheel down towards Verve Curve, Yestin. This is brilliant. Unfortunately for LP, he uh, spun the exit in turn three, and Paul Orange gets the move done into turn nine on Aylin. That's a brilliant start for JCB, but a brilliant start for Glock and the Jaguar. That's what he wanted to do, get into the lead in front of Pillars, and they've put a, built a little bit of a gap already. Yeah, Aylin stealing that P3 back as well, heading up towards Bank Sambadel. So the Nintendo team benefiting massively uh, from that curve there, or heading up that winding section. Uh, after the Lakea Bend, it was the Nintendo car that managed to strike dominance here, but Glock is your leader. Currently in P1, being chased by infamous pillars. You can just see that Glock very comfortable 
at this moment in time. The Delta time currently stands at half a second, but infamous pillars, very tenacious, that MTV car will be back in his sights very soon. A disaster for Jaguar, um, and then had uh, either a bit of contact or a spin by himself in the exit of turn 11, the hairpin, and uh, he's in the pits for a new front wing. Yeah, not ideal at all for Andenge. Jaguar team coming here with a lot of prospects considering the number of cars they've got here. Has all shot down, has a little look on the inside of Pauly Orange on the outside, should I say, of that seat curve. And Pauly Orange losing a little bit of shape there on the exit. Remember we said that all shot down on the soft tyres will be a very dynamic character in the first few laps. He's already overtaken I Am Sloth. He's up to P6 from P7. So showing a lot of pace right now, and this is exactly what BMW will want to see. Their other man, Ramsell, he's in the top 10 as well. A superb start from him. Remember, he did not qualify into Q3. And uh, Ramsell, of course, who currently shows in the Pot 4 Championship, definitely uh, play, well, definitely performing the race of his life right now. He's currently in P10, holding off the approaches from Paul Watson, who is very close in behind him as well. As we now look further back, that Jaguar car getting closer to the rear end of that BMW. As Ramsell receives a penalty, not ideal, but I am Sloth now, getting closer to the back of all shot down. See if the medium runner of the MTV can overtake the BMW going to turn one. Nothing to be done there. Ramsell's penalty was for corner cut and extreme, exceeding track limits, whatever you want to call it. And, uh, well, Paul and Matteo are going at it through turn one. And Paul's gone right around the outside of turn three. That is what we, we like to see. Clean race in there between the Jaguar and the Nintendo. Yeah, superb move there by Paul Watson. And uh, successfully defending that P11 position. And he's still chasing Ramsell, who's in the BMW car and showing well, albeit though he has got a penalty to his name. Of course, we did speak about track limits here at Spain, very tricky, and uh, you can very easily be thrown out wide and move across the white line. In behind though, Matteo, tenacious as well, trying to gather back on Paul Watson. I'm sure we'll see the, those two tangle as we move further into this race. In behind as well, Xerxes in P13, of course, MTV in with a hell of hellacious shout here today because they've got three cars in the top 10. Of course, infamous pillars who have P1 on the grid at the start of this Grand Prix and also I am Sloth and Chazza grouped together in P7 and 8. Looking, pos looking like a possible successful weekend here for Team MTV here. Definitely. Meanwhile, down for the battle of 10th, 11th and 12th. There's a brilliant opportunity for, for Paul or Matteo, either one, to get past the their car in front. And it looks like Matteo's going to take advantage of it. He's going to go down the inside of Ramsell as well. He's looking for the two-for-one offer. He won't quite get it there. But he's got up to P11 and he's all over the back of the BMW. Will he have a look down the inside into turn four? And it looks like he'll get the move done into turn four. And Paul looks like the follow suit as well. But X has come from nowhere. Absolutely nowhere. And he's up to P11. That's phenomenal. Yes, it certainly seems to me that Xerxes, showing all the promise of a Persian god, makes his way up to P11, closely followed by Ramsel, of course, who's become the almost the big collateral, uh, the, well, the collateral damage in that manoeuvre, dropping down from P10 down to P12, with a penalty to his name as well, not ideal at all. And Paul Watson, who's currently his second and, well, 1.1 seconds back, being taken by Chewie in the Nintendo car. A dynamic move there from Chewie in the Nintendo car. And uh, that moves him up to P13. Paul Watson down to P14. Matteo in a big switcheroo up to P10. And I think we've had a little bit of a spinala there as Ramsell drops down to P15. And he's on the grass here, Yeshtin. That won't help him at all. Meanwhile, Aylam's just lost the position to the GCB of Droftas. And the, uh, and the GCB moves up into the podium places. Maybe Pauly Orange can follow suit, but he's a little bit too far behind to make any sort of move as they uh, start lap five. Well, they're in the middle of lap five of the 33. It's a long Grand Prix, this uh, 50% race run for Catalonia. But uh, there's still plenty of action happening so far, and there's still going to be plenty to come. Yes, and the DRS, of course, became active. Uh, back in lap three so they will have that option available to them now for the foreseeable future dry race here today no rain expected here at spain and uh why not indeed i gotta say phenomenal battles we've had on this circuit and uh, we look forward to seeing some more that's for sure as we now see paulie orange rounding that lakea ben heading up through the next uh s section now around new holland 
or should I say Bank San Bedell, sorry, New Holland, of course, being the final corner of the circuit. Aylen trying to let fly here at Jockdash, trying to recover that P3 position that he lost, but Glock, just look at the mighty Glock there. He's already drawn out to 1.5 seconds in front of Infamous Pillars. That is absolutely unbelievable. Glock showing a remarkable turn of foot, but uh, we, we've come to expect it, haven't we? Is, is that Glock? But uh, it's a brilliant drive so far for the... Uh the Jaguar and he's just going to hopefully for his sake he's just going to keep that lead maybe extend it by a few more seconds as the as the race wears on and uh, well just take the win yeah team orders as well by looks of it at MTV Chazza being allowed to go on and fight to maybe tackle all shot down of course uh, on medium tyres further as we go into the race all shot down will become mightily slower of course he's on soft tyres for the time being and uh, you can see he's got plenty of medium cars that are gunning after him right now. And you can just think, obviously, with a few more laps to add it onto the tyres, they will so sh show signs of blistering and eventually will need a change. As they round the camps to corner once again, Chazza letting fly here again as they make their way down towards the Lakea Bend, fighting it out for P6. And we've got another retiree, LPE, out of the race. That's Jaguar down to only... Three cars, and, and Denge and Paul Watson are relegated to the back of the grid, leaving Glock, the sole survivor, in in P1. And we've got a virtual safety car, Yestin. Yeah, so obviously some drivers might think about pitting, but none of the medium runners up in front will. This could be a perfect opportunity if all shot down takes it, and he will. LP retired at the chicane in the middle sector, turn seven and eight, and this is a, 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 a free pit stop, basically, for all shot down if he wants to take it, but unfortunately we're back to green flags, so this will kind of hurt all shot down a little bit as he puts a new set of medium tyres on, this will push him down the, the order a little bit, but uh, I don't think that's what all shot down or BMW wanted. No, oh, we're back to the battle at the top end, Aylen and Drofdas separated by eight and a half tenths of a second, in behind as well Paulie Orange and uh, Aylen in amongst a, a JCB sandwich here, and uh, certainly not a place you want to be. Two very tenacious characters, of course, Drofdas and Paulie Orange. They round that Capsa corner, heading down now on the stretch towards Lakea Bend. And uh, the red livery there in between two yellow JCB cars, as we previously discussed. Of course, Orange looking uh, one of the quicker individuals in qualifying, heading into Q3. He held the P1 spot for a short amount of time and uh, obviously left frustrated after being hindered in his fast lap and uh, that will not certainly help him and uh, I can imagine he was probably very upset by it as well as they now round the New Holland corner heading down the stretch and uh, still Aylin trying to catch Drofdas but that gap is increasing it's now out to 1.1 seconds now Yestin so Drofdas is finding some really really good solid pace and the TRS the little very little TRS train has, uh, has broken so this is a perfect opportunity to pull the orange to get the overtake back on Aylen for B4, see if that will develop at the end of this lap or, or the start of the next lap. It should be very interesting to see if it does. Yeah, it will be absolutely as they now make their way down towards the next left hander. This, of course, being the seat to lock up there slightly from Paulie Orange. Not the not something you really want to see. Certainly, if you're the JCB man, and uh, it certainly won't help the health of your tyres. He now rounds the next, well, the birth curve, round Capsa corner. And letting fly is Paulie Orange. The DRS opens up for him once again. No DRS for Aylin. He's pretty much a sitting duck at this stage, given the fact that uh, he has got no DRS himself. Drofdas has managed to break the second gap. And uh, as they make their way around Bank San Bedell, you can see there Paulie Orange getting closer and closer to the rear of that Nintendo car as they round the Europe car bend, heading down towards the chicane RACC. And Paulie Orange looking to make some serious manoeuvres here and improve the prospects of this JCB team as he comes round the straight now after New Holland down past the paddock. Here comes Paulie Orange now. Four tenths of a second, the delta time difference between him and Aylin. Can he get a move going into the elf curves? No, he holds back at least for now as he comes round those elf bends heading around the Renault curve. He's going to be patient here, Yastin, but it certainly looks to be Orange's to, to uh, well, it certainly seems to be Orange's position to make here. Meanwhile, Drofdas in front of them is uh, within a second of Pillars. So Pillars either has lost a dramatic amount of pace and he's fallen within the DRS of Drofdas. So this is another opportunity for two, for two JCB 
overtakes come in right up hopefully Yo, this race is working perfectly in the hands of JCB right now as uh, Aylan now rounds the Kamsa corner. So does Paulie Orange. DRS once again activates here for the JCB car. Has a little look down the inside. No movement can be made heading into the Lakea bend. On the outset now heading up through the next S section. Now heading around Bank Sambadan. You get to think that maybe Aylan's time has run out as they come down towards through the final sector, down through Europe car, through the chicane RACC. Very shortly they'll be making their way down the long stretch, of course. Droft has to be looking to make manoeuvres on infamous pillars, but not before. Paulie Orange riding on the coattails of that Nintendo car. Aylan in massive jeopardy here as Paulie Orange lights it up here, paints it orange here into P4. And the JCB car, ever tenacity there from Paulie Orange into P4 indeed. A dynamic manoeuvre going into the elf curves Aylan trying to stab right onto his back in order to try and reclaim that position but it's not going to be losing a bit of shape there orange Aylan has a look it's not going to be happening for Aylan Nintendo down to P5 and Droftas is now marching on MTV's very own infamous pillars a very nice move from Paulie Orange down the inside into turn number one and this is a brilliant opportunity for JCB to get a double podium maybe if if uh, Joff doesn't get the move on pillars, then um, well, he could obviously fall into the traps of the uh, of Paulie Orange, which would be a, a massive success for GCB at the start of this Grand Prix. Yeah, it'd be a huge coup for them, that's for sure. Aylan still remaining in the half a second gap, at least for the time being, on Paulie Orange. Uh, Droftas looking to do the same at this moment in time. Six tenths, the difference maker right now as they round the chicane RACC. Droftas looked to take that final chicane maybe a little bit better there as they now round the final corner at New Holland. And this time, it's Droftas who's going to be making all the moves here as they come past the paddock. Here comes the JCB once again. This time, the new Portonian of Droftas bombing down the inside, heading into turn one and gets it done before the corner. Dynamic manoeuvre there from Droftas. P2, the two JCB drivers are in for Phenomenal form, they're fighting extraordinary pace and they're both equally improving their points prospects here in the Spanish Grand Prix here, Yestin. Going down the inside is a popular one this evening, just he's shown there by the JCB drivers and uh, hopefully we could have a little battle for the lead coming up. Obviously Glock doesn't want that, as they say that, he's picked up a time penalty for corner cutting, and that's the first one he's picked up this evening, so he has to be careful now. That he doesn't pick up any more, and hopefully the other drivers around him will pick up some penalties up, so he will maintain the lead. Yeah, well, Andenge has made a position up to P14. He's on a recovery drive right now. Xerxes in amongst the battle between Mateo and Chewie as well. He's got two Nintendo cars dead ahead of him here. It's, it's MTV versus Nintendo in for the top 10 placings here. And uh, oh my word, Ooh. a crunching incident there from Xerxes. And uh, I must say, he was very lucky to get away with only potential wing damage here, of course. He could have very easily uh, DNF the car. And uh, even though that's probably bad enough to lose your end plate, but a crunching blow there. And we have spoken before about oversteer heading out of Verth Curve. If you apply the power too early, you can spin off the track. And certainly if you're too harsh on it, the car just simply loses traction. But a nudge into the wall there. And uh, Xerxes, his prospects are significantly damaged as well as the car is, uh, Yestin. Yeah, that looks like a very quick impact to the wall. It wasn't, it wasn't quite. Uh, it was, it was very quick from the, the moment he lost the back end and impact to the wall. So it looked like a bit of a, a, bit of a freak accident. There. He's very lucky only to lose an end plate. Meanwhile, down in P11, there's been an overtake. All shot down. His uh, strategy, pitting under the VSC hasn't worked. Meanwhile, Paul Orange and Pillars have both picked up time penalties. So that will give Glock a bit more confidence, but. Uh, Doftas is the only one out of the top four that hasn't picked one up so far. No, and uh, you can just see now the two Nintendo cars battling it out as well. Mateo and Chewie, the top ten placings up for grabs still. They're in the top ten as things stand. P9 for Mateo, P10 for Chewie as they make their way up towards Kamsa Corner once again. And uh, just glistening, just brushing the curbs there on the outset, heading down the stretch now towards Lakea. Uh, Paulie Orange, like you say, with a time penalty. In the pits comes Glock and Droftas as well. So the two top end drivers coming in for a change. And that means the infamous pillars will retake the lead with Paulie Orange down in P2 now with Aylan into P3 and Chazza moves up to P4. 
So where will Glock come out? He will he come out? And he will come out just behind Sloth. That'd be that'd be good news for Phyllis. Sloth could uh, help his team out a little bit there, but he found them playing a little uh, hold up game on Glock. But uh, as he uh, his new tyres out, those new hard tyres, those could take uh, the Jaguar and the JCB to the end of this Grand Prix, and I think. Many of the runners on the uh, mediums will will select the hard tyres for their second stint. Absolutely, it it it'd be certainly interesting to see how they judge the remaining laps. Of course, it's very tricky when you come down to fifty percent races. It can really uh, upset the balance, should I say, or maybe uh, you, you you're never too sure as to what the right move is going to be. Aylan in P3 at the moment on twelve lap old mediums. It almost might be the case that you're better off just trying to stay out on the mediums and just trying to see how much you can get out of the tyres. As uh, we now see Aylan coming into the pit lane. Chaz are now rounding the next right-hander. And uh, heading into the next S section, of course, the RACC chicane. And he is well heading into the pit lane. So a lot of the drivers now looking to make some moves here. And uh, as we're now seeing them all leave the pit lane now. Aylan still in top spot, albeit infamous pillars now coming past Paulie Orange. And uh, by the looks of it, Glock as well piling through as well. So Glock now retakes the lead. He is your provisional P1 sitter, suspect to the penalty, of course, but Droftas, hot on his heels, currently a second behind him there, and they're both on the hard tyres as well, so the pit stop's really starting to come into fruition now, yes, Dave. So it looks like the uh, top five will go to the end of the race. They're, they're running a completely different race, on, they're in a different planet. The rest of the field moves will be called uh, Formula 4.5, as these uh, the top five clearly show in the uh, true pace of Formula 4 here tonight, they're just in a completely different world compared to the rest of the field. They certainly are. The gaps have really, really started to string out now. And, uh, the gap between Matteo and Aylan, both Nintendo cars, by the way, currently sits at approximately five and a half seconds. So obviously a lot of delta time to be gained by Matteo if he wants to catch up with his teammate Aylan. Of course, the captain, should we say, of the Nintendo team now rising up through the next chicane. P5. Aylan has been a phenomenally consistent driver this season. Currently leads his pot at 84 points. Five points clear of Andenge, who is not really a concern of his right now. He's down in P12, is the pop Jaguar man. And uh, Aylan on form to bring in home some serious points indeed. He could yet move into the podium places because, of course, Pillars and Orange both have penalties. And uh, that will allow Aylan, certainly, if he can get close enough, to actually make a move into the penalty placings as Chazza now manages to go past Chewy, albeit Chewy coming into the pit lane for his first stop. The gaps, they're going to be so strung out here yesterday, it's going to be unbelievable. I think uh, Chazza is going to have a race, well, the, majority, the rest of the race, all by himself. He's 10 seconds behind Aylan, and he's got around about a six second gap to Sloth, his team is behind him. So it doesn't look good for Chazza if he wanted some. Uh, epic battle in this evening it looks like he'll be stuck in his own he certainly will be at least for now Paulie Orange now riding up on the rear end of infamous pillars as uh, we can now see and Droftas incidentally has managed to break into the second gap and he's currently eight and a half tenths away from Glock so he's really pushing and uh, speaking of pushing Paulie Orange pushing immensely hard there locking up at Lakea and that's cost him a little bit of time as they round the next right hander now going through Bank Sambadel now coming around Europe car, Pillar's still in P3 and uh, Paulie Orange still trying to let fly and close the gap. Um, but like I said, Droftas now within that second mark, he'll, he'll have a chance very soon to close on Glock himself, utilising the DRS as uh, Paulie Orange is doing so now, looking to close the gap on infamous Pillars as they make their way down towards turn one. The MTV Motorsport car still able to uh, maintain that P3 spot as the gap is very well marginalised at this moment in time. Paulie Orange still though, with the pace, looks very prominent here in this race. Lap 16 of 33. Don't throw away your tickets, folks. All things could change up in the second half of this Grand Prix. Quite possibly anything could happen in the second half of the Grand Prix. Uh, you can even put some money on Elon winning this Grand Prix if uh, things go really out of control. But uh, Glock is in a little bit of trouble here. He's got the JCP car behind him. And it doesn't look like he's pulling away like what he did earlier in the Grand Prix. So this is a brilliant opportunity for JCB to pick up a win. It is indeed. And uh, Paulie Orange now within half a second now. Four tenths is the gap. Now six on the exit of Lakea Bend. But Paulie Orange certainly maintaining it well as they come round Bank Sambadel. 
Uh, Drofta has still yet to narrow the gap further than that 8 tenth uh, mark, but he's still closing on Glock. 7 tenths is the gap now. Pauli Orange just brushing too much of that curve there. Again, costing him a little bit of time and giving Piers that little bit of respite as they bomb their way past the paddock down the straight now, utilizing the DRS. A lot of straight line speed on Pauli Orange's car here. JCB looking menacing. Drofdas is also within a half a second gap. He is close right up to Glock here. So we have got a spectacular finish on our hands with uh, in lap 17 of 33. And still at this stage, approximately 16 laps to go. And uh, I can't call this one, Yestin. And I, uh, I'm, I've got to say question marks on whether you can call it too. I don't particularly want to call it either. Meanwhile, Antenj is uh, fight back from his spin on the open lap. He's just gone down the inside of the wall, shot down in turn one and moves himself up into P8. But obviously, he's only pitted the one, so now it's for a second set of uh, medium tyres. So he will have to pit again. So obviously, he'll be looking to uh, elongate this stint and then hopefully pit for a new set of soft tyres uh, near the end. Yes, an incredible recovery there from Andenge, all the way from the back of the grid now up to P8, uh, albeit he had an early stop, and uh, he's got to try and string out these mediums for as long as possible, maybe take a trip onto the soft, so I get a feeling that maybe they might fall off him here, it might be a case that he has to go onto the hards, we'll have to see as he makes his way down towards the Lakea Bend, you might see how long those mediums can take him here, yes, it may be a fast finish on the soft tyres. Yeah, I hope, that's what I think he he would be hoping for. Obviously, he'll have to keep his uh, tyres in very good conditions. Help these rack up with their uh, sloth becoming the next member of the uh, of the, the so-called penalty club. And uh, the gap is still six tenths up in front. Pillars is uh, Pillars is uh, kind of closed in on the Poly Orange. Poly Orange as well to close the gap to around about five tenths now. As there's another lockup on that uh, on that front left for the JCB. That won't do his tyres any good at all. No, and all shot down as well, battling with the likes of um, certainly, well, I think it's actually a battle for P's 9 and 10. And Denj uh, dropping back in the field. He has indeed pitted and he's gone out on the hards this time. No soft tyres for Andenj. So his mediums must have been feeling a little bit slick. He's decided to swap for the hards, but the battle is beginning to light up here between Paulie Orange and Infamous Pillars as they now around Sector 3. And this is the closest that Orange has been. A little bit of a shake of the steering wheel there. Not ideal as they round Europe car. Heading down through the chicane RACC once again. But just look how close that MTV car is to the front end of the JCB. Pillars knocking up a little bit of that turf on the outset now. Heading round New Holland. Down the stretch past the paddock now. But the delta time out by seven and a half tenths of a second. As Paulie Orange looks to put a huge dent in the prospects here of infamous Pillars. They make their way down towards the first corners and Xerxes out of the race as well. BSC here, Yestin. I don't know where Xerxes uh, returned. Oh, I think there's a, a, a car at the exit of turn two going into turn three. I think that's where the uh, MTV car has uh, put it in a wall. So a little bit of a VSC now just to calm things down. I think I'll then to be a bit disappointed with that time in that VSC because uh, He'll be a bit disappointed. Someone who's going to try and benefit from it is all shot down. Who's in the pits for a second set of medium tyres. Hopefully this one can last a little bit longer than the one previously in this Grand Prix. He'll lose a position to Matteo, but he'll come out behind him, which will be good for the BMW and his chances of getting points this race. Absolutely, all shot down, benefiting massively with that pit stop. And he's going to be one of the fastest finishers in this race. Currently donning medium tyres, fresh medium tyres, against a grid full of hard tyres currently. So we're going to have approximately, for the rest of the race remaining, about 14 laps left in this Spanish Grand Prix here on Formula 4. And um, I've got to say, Glock has driven a great race, but Drofdas has huge potential to knock him off his perch here. In the pits comes in from his pillars and uh, looking to remove those hard tyres. Maybe looking to take a trip onto the softs for the remaining part of the race. It's a, it's a very interesting time to pit here. Obviously, the VSC has ended. So that's I good. Think, I think he's serving a drive-through for speeding, a speed under the VSC, which will be a disaster for pillars. Well, it's, yet, op it's opened the door. Been... It's opened the door for JCB as well, yes, isn't it? Because you've got Drop Das and Paulie Orange into P3, not to mention the Drofdas now closing on Glock. 
to MTV after an impressive qualifying session and relegated down the classifications, Chazza, their highest member, P5, again, we see a string of MTV cars. Yeah, so you've got the, uh, the, the three of them uh, all, all uh, together, 5th, 6th and 7th. That will be a disappointment for Pillars Speed and the, the VSC is not what you want to do or not what you s expect to see in Lee Grissom. But, uh, you have to take those drive throughs on the chin and uh, well Pillars is down to P6 and I think at best he'll get up to P5 but I can't see him gaining 10 seconds over to Galen. No, and it's getting tighter at the top end as well. Glock currently clear by 7 tenths of a second but uh, Drofdas very happy just to stay in the Delta Gap right now. Currently no penalties applied to the new Portonian right now so he's just happy to stay within the Delta time. And, uh, of course, maybe he'd rather get it done on track. But nonetheless, he's in with a chance of knocking Glock off his perch. Drofdas in with a chance of a great victory here in Spain. And uh, if this race continues to go the way it's going, 12 laps time, we could be shouting Drofdas's name as he crosses the finish line. But Glock still in P1 for the time being. Drofdas, no penalties to his name in P2. Paulie Orange in P3. A penalty to his name with Aylin currently in P4. So Aylin will still have a chance at a potential podium here if he can stay within that three-second delta gap between him and Paulie Orange. Chazza is in P5. A string of MTV cars with infamous pillars and I am Sloth making up the three of them as uh, Mateo in P8 and all shot down P9 and Denj P10 uh, after coming out of the pits on those two-lap old hards. Amazing scenes here so far, folks as Drofdas once again gets close to the rear end of Glock, running round the new Holland Ben now. As you can now see, him getting closer and closer to the rear end of Glock's car. The Jaguar might be in jeopardy here. Is Drofdas going to leave it late? Is it going to be a late lunge? No, he's going to be patient there and just get as close as he can to the rear end of that Jaguar. The JCB car not too worried about overtaking at this stage. It's all about conservation. It's all about taking care. Drofdas still in the frame for a P1 finish. Yeah, obviously as it stands, if the race were to end as we speak, we would win the Grand Prix. Obviously, elam has got a really good chance of a podium here. If he, if he gets within three seconds of Paulie Orange, he, he obviously claims that podium spot, but obviously he's just outside that three-second window as we speak. Yeah, well, Glock now rounding the next right-hander. This is at Capsa Corner, and uh, in behind you can see there, Drofdas in the distance and uh, really pushing for all he's worth, heading around Lakea Ben. Closing the gap nicely. Indeed, the green livery, though, still on P1 spot. Drofdas could still yet make a move, heading into lap 23 of 33. We're going to have 10 laps remaining here, folks, as we have a yellow flag in sector one, and all shot down. It must be an incident there, because Ice Streams and Chewie have overtaken him. So is Energetic 6. I'm not sure whether you've got eyes on that yesterday, but we're now seeing... Drofdas once again with the DRS now becoming available. Is he going to make a move on Glock here for the win here at the Spanish Grand Prix? Here comes the JCB car, rides alongside that of Pulp Jaguar's Glock and gets the move down before the corner. Scintillating stuff. Glock knows he has to tag him back as they round the Renault curve. Here comes Glock again, a beautiful switch back there from Glock, regains that P1 spot. Mesmeric driving from the pair of them here. A phenomenal exchange as they round down towards what will be the seat curve. Scintillating step from Glock to retake that P1. Drofdas nearly had it made, but it just wasn't to be yesterday. Phenomenal battle between two of the quickest drivers today. Glock with a phenomenal switchback to regain the lead. For the incident with all shot down, he um, he lost the back in the exit of turn two, and uh, he went into the wall and lost a, lost a chunk of his end plate, which is uh, unfortunate for the BMW. Absolutely crucial at this moment in time. Of course, all shot down, not in an ideal position. Two lap old medium tyres, of course, he's been um, really buckled by pit stops and now he's got damage to his car. That's not going to help as Drofdas there loses a little bit of the car, a little bit of oversteer slightly coming out of the chicane, heading down the stretch now past the paddock. He will get another go here at Glock before turn one. These two are going to be sparring it off for the rest of this Spanish Grand Prix. Has a little nose down the inside. Is Glock going to be patient? Oh, oh sorry, Drofdas going to be patient. He is indeed heading around the Elf curves. He's going to try and maintain that P2 spot at least for now. Glock needs to try and break the penalty gap. He needs to be three seconds clear at least 
if he wants to win this Grand Prix, but Drovdas making his life difficult for him, remaining within that half a second gap, and uh, that's exactly where he needs to be to pick up P1 here at Spain. Amazing race here yesterday. I don't think we called it at this stage. Unfortunately for Drovdas, he picked up a three second time penalty last lap. So this is, uh, whoever finishes in front between these two will win the Grand Prix without penalties being considered because they both got the same amount. So, um, yeah, so this is a scrap for the lead. So Glock would, if the race were to end now, Glock would, would win. Yes, yeah, so we got a very honest battle indeed in the top end. Glock running slightly wide in Bank San Bedell, coming down towards the Europe car bend. The JCB car have dropped out, still remaining within the Delta Gap. We're going to be seeing some real sparring and exchanges. They round through the chicane RACC, rounding New Holland now round towards the straight. Here comes Droftas once again, still within that half a second gap as they make their way down towards turn one yet again. The Alp curves beckon and uh, still Droftas not quite close enough yet to make a maneuver. Glock able to crunch out a little bit more straight line speed. It's gonna be very tricky for Droftas to lay down a long on track charge because obviously I think Glock's straight line speed is more advanced than that of Droftas's. So, Obviously, it's going to be a lot harder for the JCB driver to get a move done going into turn one. So he's, he really needs to get as close as he can in sectors two and three in order to make the move count at the start of potentially lap 26 or later than that. But he needs to get it done within the next eight laps, Yestin. It's so crucial. Both of them on the same penalty um, the, the same penalty standings. So at the moment, it's going to be an honest finish. It's going to be a real fighting battle right to the end for that P1 spot. Yeah, obviously, uh, Droftas would actually would, would help if he were to save some ERS. Obviously, that would obviously help him as it stands. Glock has got 10% more than the, the JCB driver, as just as things stand. They go into the chicane for yet another time and about to start lap 26 for this uh, Spanish Grand Prix. They do past the DRS line now and Drofdas is close once again potentially a move to be made here once again it is round two here at Spain as Drofdas makes as a little nose he's going to be patient once again not comfortable yet to make the move he perhaps wants to leave it late as possible Glock there opening the door slightly rounding now Renault curve and uh, I've got to say scintillating stuff here in lap 26 of 33 still plenty left to go here in the context of Formula 1 and uh, another seven laps to go. It has been absolutely unbelievable, folks. I want to hear your comments as well for driver of the day. Please put them in the comment in the comments box and uh, use the live chat. Tell us who you think has been your top performer in this Spanish Grand Prix here in Formula 4. As we now see Drovdas about to round Campsa corner, chasing and hightailing it after Glock, who's currently leading the way. The gap now of four seconds back to Paulie Orange in P3. JCB still on for a great crop of points here today, which will surely place them closer to the gap between them and Nintendo, who currently only have Aylan, who's in the top five. So it's certainly going to be an interesting one at the end of this race, certainly where the points are considered. Uh, or certainly where the points are concerned as uh, we now see Droftas now chasing Glock round the New Holland corner down towards the stretch once again he's within half a second still as they come down past the paddock once again Glock under a lot of pressure here uh, once more as Droftas eyes up potentially another move no he's going to be patient again he's going to leave it till the last minute once again needs to get close he seems to be quicker going around the last stages of the elf curves though as he heads around Renault chucks it out wide looking to garner every little bit of time all across the track it's going to be a real fight to the finish here Yestin he's trying to find a way to put everything into the car also to the people watching the stream put your predictions down in the comments because I think me and George can both agree I don't think I want to predict this. I don't think you either, do you, George? No, not particularly, Estin. I will say, though, X Gaming coming out with Xerxes Driver of the Year um, with, a, with a spin and a crash like that. I'm sure he would be, as we now see. Um, Droftas coming down towards Lakea Ben, uh, really leaping after Glock at this stage, about to come through the next UK, and uh, Glock still in P1 being challenged by that of the new Portonian dropped ass of course Chazza currently in P6 as well trying to close the gap on his teammate infamous pillars they now round through the chicane RACC Glock still on top here comes dropped ass though currently seven tenths of a second he's further away than where he was previously in the lap and uh, I gotta say that's not gonna help 
uh, at this stage. He's, uh, he's, he's got a little bit more straight line speed though than Glock. He's getting closer and closer all the time. And uh, I wouldn't write Draft Dash for a potential move going into lap 29 as they come out through. Oh my word! Oh my word! Draft Dash out of the race! Out of the race, a crunching blow! Heading around the elf curves, heading into Renault. He lost all control of the car, met the concrete barrier. Unbelievable! The battle for P1 was hot and intense. He caught the curb wrong, and he's now into obscurity. Safety car now to finalize this Grand Prix. Five laps of madness here at Spain. Yestin, I cannot believe what I've just seen. I am absolutely speechless. They were so close to each other, they were within a couple of tenths. And the next thing I knew, the uh, JCP's car has uh, lost the back end and gone straight into a wall. Phenomenal scenes. But Poly Orange up the P2. This gives Pillars a massive opportunity after his time penalty, after his drive through penalty you picked up earlier on. He'll be right behind the top three. Obviously, it depends if they all pit for a new, fret, a new set of soft tyres. There's a couple of people that have already, and Denge and Sloth have both done that. And uh, surely the top guys will have to pit for a new set of tyres. Well, the question is, will Aylin stay out? Because you've got to think that if Aylin stays out and he sees that Glock and Paulie Orange go into the pits, which they certainly do, Aylin may as well stay out here because, of course, Glock and Orange both have penalties. Aylin could try and stay out. No, he is coming into the pit lane. So interesting scenes here. Of course, Pillars, he may as well come into the pits as well. He's got a penalty to his name. Chazza could be an outsider for a potential podium. The thing is, the benefit of these safety cars, it allows the grid... To bunch right back up. If I was Aylin, I probably would have stayed out, to be quite honest. But give him credit. He's on the softs now. He's going to be really trying to challenge for a flying finish in this race. And uh, as he now leads the pit lane. Unbelievable scenes in the, Sp in the Spanish Grand Prix. You think you've seen it all, Yestin. But Droftas, who was the direct challenger and looked to be the favourite for this Grand Prix, crashes out, out of the first couple of corners at the Elf Curves. And uh, that's him out. JCB, they were looking at a very, very positive weekend. They could still look at a positive weekend with Paulie Orange now in the top end. But it almost seems like the race has got away from them here. Yeah, they were looking for two podiums and they end with a, a maximum of one at least. Maybe if things go really wrong for Paulie Orange, they might not get a, a single podium in this Grand Prix. It's a big relief for Glock that he... Uh, he doesn't have a, a wild GCP behind him, but he does have another one to contend with in the last remaining laps. He does. He's got uh, another JCB car dead in behind him, Paulie Orange, but Aylin is one of the bigger threats as well. Don't forget, he's got soft tyres on too and no penalties to boot. So Aylin in pole position for a potential race victory here and uh, would certainly be a huge boon to his life here in Formula 4. Pot 2 driver, of course, and potentially can land himself a great, valuable win for Nintendo. Of course, they're trying to maintain a gap at the top of the table. 263 points to their name, the Nintendo Racing Team. P1 in the team championship. And uh, just look at the cars ahead of them there. Of course, you've got all shot down in the middle of them here. Of course, he's in P12, so he's technically a blue flag car. So, um, in usual rules of... Uh, in Formula 1, the uh, back marker would be allowed to regain his places. As uh, we, know, we now look ahead and see Glock and Paulie Orange aggressively warming up their tyres. You can just see that, and in fact, I think All Shot Down is trying to make his places back. So he has gone through past the safety car. And um, Ayla now coming up through the next section. And in fact, All Shot Down has been disqualified. All Shot Down, I believe, has been disqualified according to my... According to my screen here, all shot down out of the race with a DQ, ignoring a five-second penalty. Very, very interesting that yesterday. I did not see that coming. I wasn't expecting that. Obviously, it's procedure in real life Formula One to uh, to let pass the, uh, the the left cars to go by and pass the safety car. But uh, that's a disappointment for BMW, really. Yeah, they haven't had it easy, and their only other car is in P13. It has not gone to plan for BMW here today and uh, I'm sure they would be they would be hoping for better days all this has actually allowed MTV to potentially overtake the BMW team because they have got three cars in P's four five and six I mean this must feel like a race win on its own 
uh, with all three cars currently in the mix. I've got to say, the one driver this has worked out spectacularly for is Andenge. He's in P7, and uh, he's on fresh softs as well. And really, really tight in behind that of I Am Sloth, Chazza, and Pillars. And don't forget, he's got a string of cars with penalties on them. Andenge, no penalties to his name yesterday. Yeah, so obviously he could gain a couple of positions near the end. And uh, Aylan's got a brilliant opportunity to win this Grand Prix in the Nintendo. Obviously with the two cars in front both picking up penalties as well as there's Chazza in the MTV car who's stuck down in P5 at the moment. So uh, this is anyone's game. Anyone can win this Grand Prix. Absolutely. Well, it's going to leave us very, very close to the end of this race. The safety car out again for another lap at least. Glock is still in P1. Paulie Orange P2, Aylan in P3. So the way things are tracked right now, Aylan in with a huge chance here of a race win. And you can imagine that he's trying to compose himself, does not want to get ahead of himself here. He's going to take it every step at a time. The way things are panned out right now, I can see them only having two laps remaining in this Grand Prix, which won't be enough for Glock or Paulie Orange to build the gap or build the lead away from Aylan. Um, so it's going to be really difficult for them to actually make sure they win this race or or at least uh, maintain their positions because Aylan could be the spoke in the wheel for both of their performances here today. Not forgetting Chazza as well, who's in P5 and uh, on the rear end of infamous Pillars. I mean, Pillars might be better off letting Chazza go here and seeing if the MTV car can earn them some better points. But we'll soon see. Obviously, it's all dependent on the strategy here and uh, certainly... Glock is going to be the man that decides when they get going again, Yastin. Yeah, so once the safety car will announce it will uh, depart at the end of the lap, Glock will be the uh, the effective safety car in himself, uh, uh, a green livery safety car. I thought we'd never see that in, the, in Formula 1, but uh, yeah, there's the risk control message, safety car in this lap, so the uh, safety car will just uh, drive away like it normally does and uh, Glock will hold up the rest of the field. Yes, Glock waiting in anticipation. He's literally holding up the entirety of this grid classification right now as they make their way through this next right-handed section. The Jaguar team hoping for another positive performance here today. Glock looks in good shape to give it to them, but not forgetting, Aylan is right in the mix and looking to really express some power dominance here through the rest of this classification. Aylan with such an epic opportunity here of getting some significant points as they now round off and the gun goes and Glock with a mighty restart there goes clear by seven tenths of a second but Aylan not far away from Paulie Orange as they come down towards turn one indeed. A little look down the inside there from Aylan as Glock leads the way going into the elf curves on the outset now towards the Renault curve in behind ice streams overtaking chewy moving up into ph of jcb moving up a place regardless in behind as well you've got infamous pillars riding on the coattails of aelin as well the mtv car still in the mix so the battling is still very much on the cards as they round lap 32 the penultimate lap in the spanish grand prix here yestin Paulie orange had a bit of a a bit of a moment there at the restart he lost the back end as uh, Glock went and put the put the put the uh, pedal on the metal, and uh, yeah, it's a bit of a moment for Paulie Orange. There. He's very really lucky to be in the Grand Prix. If that car lost out of control, it'd be an absolute disaster for GCB. Yes, and of course, Aylin's going to rely on that DRS as well. He needs to stay within the delta gaps of Paulie Orange and Glock right now. Of course, Orange uh, could do Aylin a favour here by staying as close to Glock as he possibly can. Glock knows he needs to get clear, and he has broken the DRS already. He is over a second, but can Paulie Orange get it back before the activation point? Uh, but no, I don't think he can, so Paulie Orange without DRS. And this final lap, Glock has got to try and put across another two seconds alone on the back of Paulie Orange, albeit though, actually... The gap is only another second. Glock needs to get going here as they round the Renault curve. Aylan knows what he has to do. He needs to stay within the second gap of Paulie Orange. Orange has managed to sort of semi-remain in amongst that second gap as well as they round through the next right hand of the Repsol curve, heading down towards the seat. It's bare knuckle time, Yastin. Who's got this in the bag? I think Aylan was going to win this Grand Prix. It would take some manic driving from the top to the pull away a three-second gap to uh, deny the uh, Nintendo car of winning this Grand Prix unless 
and that's obviously uh, Aylin that does a mistake somewhere on this last lap. So I think this is Aylin's to lose. It certainly is at this stage as they round Lakea Ben for the final time. Glock now making his way, marching through the next chicane round Bank Sambadel. It might be all taken away from him here at this stage. Paulie Orange in hot pursuit as well. But as they round the Europe Cup bend into the RACC chicane, it's going to be Glock who's going to finish P1 on track. But what of the actual P1 spot as Glock comes up towards the line? It's P1, at least for the time being, crunches the car out. Orange comes up, but Aylin strikes it in the front there. P1 to the Nintendo team. An extraordinary result, an extraordinary race. Glock comes home in P2, Pauli Orange in P3. What a result for Team Nintendo. It was all taken away from Droftas as well. Remember, he crashed earlier on. That caused the safety car, potentially allowing Aylin the win here. A phenomenal race. Plenty of phenomenal results across the grid. And there's your race winner. Aylin has done it here for Team Nintendo. Scintillating display. He is your winner of the Spanish Grand Prix. Well, we'll just go through the final classifications now, folks. Aylin is your winner for Team Nintendo. And what a grandiose victory that will be for him. Glock in P2. Uh, for Team Jaguar, Paulie Orange for JCB in P3, Chazza for MTV in P4, Infamous Pillars P5 I had to sacrifice the position to his teammate due to the penalty situation. MTV P4 and 5 though, and Denge marched his way right up through to P6, a grandiose recovery there for the Jaguar man. I am Sloth there in P7, uh, also for MTV. Chewy in P8 for Nintendo, as well as Matthew, his teammate P9, and Energetic 6, the reserve driver in for today P10, Ice Streams P11. Paul Watson in P12. Great drive from Paul Watson. Ramsell, of course, was a P13. We had, of course, our DNFs from Droftas, Xerxes, LPE, and all shot down. Uh, but what a phenomenal race there indeed. And yes, team, we were treated to an absolute clinic out there today. An absolute belt of a Grand Prix. And Dan's doing his best, Sergio Perez, by going from last to sixth. Elam nicking it to the end due to a Discipline and not corner cutting everywhere, and uh, very and hard luck for the JCB drivers tonight. Amazing scenes here at Formula Four. We were treated to some high class racing, lots of overtakes, one of the most exciting Spanish Grand Prix races I have covered. And Sudo, I'd imagine Yestin would say the same thing. Absolutely scintillating stuff, and just what we like to see, certainly when it comes to Grand Prix and Formula One racing. Uh, very epic indeed. And uh, I've got to say, obviously, I hope you guys all enjoyed that at home as well. Obviously, we had some, uh, I think, a record number of viewers here at Formula 4. So I'd like to thank every single one of you for joining us here tonight, of course, and for contributing as well. Gav says, shout out to Team MTV. Thank you, Gav. And uh, X Gaming saying, obviously, that uh, after Droftas's incident, the same corner that he, in fact, crashed on. That is, of course, Xerxes, who crashed around those initial few bends. But what a sensational uh, race indeed congratulations to Aylin on a spectacular victory and uh, obviously to Glock and Paulie Orange on the podiums as well folks just to say if you haven't done so already please leave a like onto the stream folks also leave a subscribe to the channel of course uh, my name has been CRG Geo you can check me out on Twitter uh, as well as Yestin as well Yestin's very active on Twitter what's your tag what's your tag there Yestin um at ozone underscore Yestin that's, that's where I'm at at ozone underscore Yestin you know what it's all about yeah. folks and um, we will, of course, uh, be leaving it there. I mean, we got actually before we go. Yeah, let's bring let's bring uh, our winning driver in. I don't think he's quite jumped in yet, but we will wait for him. Um, just gonna see if we can bring Chris in for a quick interview. That, of course, being Aylin. Uh, but scintillating stuff. But how important was that win to Nintendo to maintain that championship lead there, Estin? Uh, brilliant is the word, especially after losing an a. Uh, uh, a, to a, a, a pot one driver in Young Stinson earlier in the week and uh, Aylin's done a phenomenal job to uh, just to pick up the scraps and uh, take a brilliant win here tonight at Catalonia Yeah, absolutely terrific I've just heard word that uh, Aylin is on his way to the comms box very shortly he'll be joining us uh, for a interview uh, I'm sure he didn't expect to, to win that one that was absolutely incredible uh, big thank you to uh, X Gaming and Gav as well. Uh, great stream, guys. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thank you, folks, as well for all your support. I believe we do have Aylin in our comms box with us. Aylin, 
you, you, you surely did not see that coming. That safety car at the last moment gave you the world of opportunity for that P1. You took it with both hands. You must be delighted. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Absolutely it's stupendous. Nice it's nice to see you in the booth again. Yes, uh, pleased to be here. I have to say, it's uh, it's great. I got to say, we were treated to probably one of the best Spanish Grand Prix races we've ever had. I think, uh, or we've or we've seen in league racing, certainly from where I'm from my standpoint. Um, so it was absolutely special. It had everything, um, but uh, just obviously it was a very, very strange race because, of course, you showed no signs of being certainly in P1 um, before the safety car, um, but uh, you certainly seemed in in the frame for a podium. Uh, obviously, up until Drovtas's crash, that really threw you up into into the frame. I thought you might stay out on the hard tyres uh, to claim that P1 spot and then just ride it out for the last lap or so. But you did choose the soft tyres. Did it cross your mind whether to pit or not, or uh, or to make the necessary changes? Uh, no, I was always going to stop. Always yeah, going to stop. Ch chances are, on the hard tyre, would have been munched up. So, um. Better to play the player safe and be with everyone else in the same strat, I guess. Yeah, and of course, very rarely do we see a pot two driver winning a Grand Prix here at Formula Four. Uh, obviously, it tends to be the the pot one guys. Of course, we had Blaze, of course, at Monaco. Young Stinson, who has just been signed to an esports team, he's obviously taken up a majority share of the wins. Of course, Droftas is up there as well as Pillars. Um, so, how does it feel to obviously be in pot two and yet still stick it to the to the pot one guys? Yeah, it's good. I mean, in in terms of overall pace, uh, pot one and two aren't there. There isn't a giant gap anyway. To be fair, at least on a single lap pace, R race pace would be a little different. But no, it's good to be. I think it's the first, isn't it? I think pot two. So I think it's the first pot two winner. Yes, yeah. Tremendous yeah, result. It's good. Yeah, and of course you're still top of the team championship. Nintendo on two hundred and sixty three points. You yourself are in P three uh, before this race. And, uh, of course, that gives you a, a good abundance of points. Um, in fact, you will take, I believe, the P2 spot off Drofdas in the championship. In fact, I believe you will go in front because Blaze didn't race today. So you will be P1 in the driver's standings. What are your thoughts on that? <laughs> in the clouds, mate. <laughs> well, of course, Young Stinson, of course, is left as well. So he was on 83 points in behind you prior to this race. And Denj being your nearest competitor... So, Aylin, you will be leading the Drivers' Championship. Nintendo still topping the Team Championship, of course. So, obviously, the points that you've earned today will go a long way to their success. And you still top the Pot 2 Championship. So, you're going for the treble here. The triple crown is in Aylin's corner right now. Can you keep it up? <laughs> I, I guess I might have to start practicing. We'll see. Uh, <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, I'll try. Yeah, I mean, obviously, we've got some great races to come. Uh, obviously, we had to reschedule the Azerbaijan Grand Prix, obviously, after the issues that we had with the uh, mm -hmm. F1 online lobbies. But uh, going into the next race, of course, because obviously we've just had Spain today. Uh, the next track, of course, is Hungary. Monaco without walls, as people call it. Uh, what are your thoughts on that race? Do you think you can carry over this form into a, another positive race weekend? All depends on that uphill left-hander, doesn't it, really? Um, but in terms of pace, I think I'll, I'll probably sit where I usually do. Um, but I can be clean as a whistle, so hopefully, again, I'll be uh, taking places off people because of penalties. Well, I've got to say, if you keep doing what you did today, you, you'll certainly go a long way in this championship. I want to congratulate you, Aileen, on a spectacular win and uh, well-deserved as well, in a sense, as well, for keeping it clean and, and uh, being tenacious as well. So uh, congratulations on topping the championship and, of course, claiming that vital win today. Well done. Thank you very much, my friend. Well done, well done. Uh, so, Yestin, another quality race as we've discussed. Obviously, looking forward to Hungary. What can we expect from that Monaco without wall circuit? Uh, um, not well. We could see the same level of excitement as what we've uh, witnessed, but uh, it's going to be a lot more tighter. There's not going to be. There might be a lot of lunges going into turn mm. one, as that's one of the main overtaking spots. But uh, nothing much else to know. So, just drivers got to be. Keeping it clean and make sure you don't run too wide just in case there is a wall there to greet you. Absolutely. Well, we'll look forward to seeing that next week. That, of course, being the 21st of December. We will look forward to that. That, of course, be next Monday. So do not forget to be here 
for that one when it drops. And uh, I hope you've all enjoyed the broadcast. As I said before, don't forget to check out the socials as well. We, of course, got uh, our channel here. Please make sure you, you've uh, subscribed up to it to stay up to date with everything Formula 4. Not forgetting as well, you can check out me and Yestin on Twitter as well. Um, but uh, obviously, we've got a link to the Discord as well. Please join the Discord and uh, get involved. Uh, you can uh, stay up to date with all the action that's going on, including the league tables, etc. Um, so it will be a pleasure to see you. Do drop by. Uh, always nice to see some friendly faces. But anyway, from me, guys, me and uh, Yestin, uh, we will see you next week for Hungary. It's been a spectacular uh, evening of racing. But until next week, we'll see you again very, very soon. Goodbye.